Alrighty, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech and Gamers, the fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And we are looking at a video that recently popped across my feed. It's about someone switching from Mac OS to Linux Mint. Now that intrigues me because Mac OS, uh, ooh, <laughs> as a Linux user, ooh, yeah, uh, you want to talk about restrictive. There, you ain't going to get much more restrictive than Mac OS. Put it that way. So let's get into this, see what he has to say and how his experience switching to Linux Mint has been thus far. Now, I want to make the caveat. I'm not a Mint guy. I'm, I appreciate what the project does, but I am not a fan of the way the project is managed or how it is managed by the people in charge of it currently. That's just my uh, disclaimer to each their own when it comes to, the, to find the distro that works best for you and the hardware that you use on the operating system in general. That is my general take, so I want to get that caveat out of the way. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video where I built this custom Linux Mint PC, and I've been using it as my main computer since. In today's video, I want to walk you through what my experience has been using Linux Mint coming from Mac OS, why I chose Linux Mint, which applications I've been using, and also I want to try to answer as many questions as possible that you had from that video. The build has held up very nicely over the last few weeks. All of the components are fully compatible with Linux Mint and it runs exceptionally quiet under even a heavy load. The original cable management for my build video has remained intact and works well within this compact case. I would highly recommend the components I used and I'll link them again in the description. However, I'd even more strongly recommend the Fractal Terra Jade case. It's not just about aesthetics despite its compact size, it offers ample space which leaves plenty of room for the upgrades that I have planned in the future. Absolutely love this entire setup. It doesn't just look great, it's also incredibly functional. The one small hiccup I've run into is the Keychron keyboard. I can't seem to get the Bluetooth to work with Linux, which explains this physical cable. It connects to my work MacBook just fine, but this desktop, I have to use this tightly managed USB-C cable. If you have any ideas on how to fix the Bluetooth, please let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. On the bright side, every other accessory like this webcam and all of my other Bluetooth devices have worked flawlessly with this Mint setup. Speaking of things that work well, I also recently switched from iPhone to Android. More on that for the channel soon. And Android also integrates perfectly with Linux. If you'd like to see a video about that, let me know in the comments as well. Overall, especially coming from a Mac, I couldn't be happier with how this has all turned out. One of the main reasons that I switched from Mac to Linux is... <laughs> so Bluetooth. Bluetooth can be spotty on some things. I know for me specifically, Sometimes pairing like a PS5 controller doesn't always play nice. Now, sometimes that can be age of the distro. If you're on bleeding edge, there's a lot of caveats that tend to go into Bluetooth, you know, kernel modules, what applications it using, blah, 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 blah. All depends. I'm here. Looks like mint cinnamon. I'm just guessing on that. I'm so I am I can't really comment. I just can tell you that I know Bluetooth on some things, some things can be a bit finicky. Um, so I totally get that. And it's kind of annoying that the that it doesn't work. Um yeah, I got a PS5 controller that I'm on Garuda, which you know, this thing should be working splendidly, but when you put it in discovery mode and try to connect, it connects and then it doesn't connect and then it connects and then it doesn't connect. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So I get it. Um, but, um, you know, I also have a controller that that's the same deal when I use it on windows, which I have the Atari VCS modern controller and wireless on windows for this is just about as spotty. So pro con, you know, they, they all have issues. So, but. Definitely get what you mean. I wish I could give you an answer on that one. It is personally, I just don't really like Windows and I wanted to move away from the Apple ecosystem. While I absolutely love everything Apple's doing with their M series chipsets, I wanted to escape the expensive and unsustainable cycle of constantly upgrading my Mac. With this custom setup, I can easily upgrade individual parts and run all of my essential apps, saving money without making any compromises. I use OBS for screen recording, Caden Live for video editing, and Audacity for my voiceovers, dragging the voiceover into my Caden Live timeline. For photo editing, it's GIMP instead of Photoshop. I also heavily use Chrome, Slack, and the terminal. So in terms of apps, I've been able to find a comparable app for every app that I used on my Mac. 
on this Linux PC. I haven't had any issues with the apps that I've been using, and I'll leave all of the apps that I am using on this setup in the description of this video, so that way you have those if you're interested. You can definitely customize Linux Mint, and a great place to start is, well, the wallpaper. The ones I'm using are fantastic, particularly on a large monitor like mine. So he's not wrong. Like, but, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that is some of the problems, you know, there, there's the issues with Windows. There's the issues that Mac OS presents. So sometimes you really do have to look outside of the two big ones and look for the alternative. And a lot of the times, despite w what people will say is, I want, and, um, the Linux itself is not a drop in replacement. And I do love the fact that he says alternatives. That is key. Alternatives are far different than what some people, especially the televangelist style Linux users that will tell you that it's a drop in replacement, which no motherfucker it is not, <laughs> uh, for a variety of different reasons. However, if there are similar alternatives, applications that work for you and are able to get you to the end result. Because realistically, what people care about is the speed at which, the, if they're going to learn some, the speed at which they can relearn something or something new, you know, be it in this case, switching applications to, you know, K Live as opposed to Final Cut or iMovie or, you know, insert other Apple movie editing software. Um, you know, so it, it's all dependent on what speed they can get to that and get the end result that they're looking for. And if there's similar or fam familiar other applications that they already know, so like in this case, say Audacity, which is available on Mac OS, is available on Linux. They're going to be a little bit more willing to make that trade, try something new for, say, a view editor, because they have that crutch of something familiar already there in this case, audacity or slack or, you know, Chrome. So th there's this kind of balance you have to play at times and people don't really want to play that balance or understand perspective and whatnot. So it, it's kind of annoying. Like mine, I'll leave all the details, including the links to the wallpapers and the channel where I discovered them down in the description. To really make Linux Mint my own, I moved the main panel to the top of the screen. I then customized all of the elements like the clock calendar and workspace switcher to make things simpler and more productive for me. Down at the bottom, I've replaced the standard taskbar with the plank dock. I just prefer its macOS feel over the default Mint setup. And if you want to tweak it, a simple control right click lets you customize plank completely. For my applications menu, I'm using Cinemenu. It's a really clean alternative for Linux Mint. I love the fact that it's fast, fluid, and organizes all of my apps perfectly. It's also fully customizable, which I'll get back to in a moment, but first, I want to dive into themes. When you open the theme settings, you'll get control over the whole look and feel. You can customize your mouse pointer, application windows, icons, and the desktop itself. Mint includes some great themes right out of the box, but you can also download custom ones. I'll leave links in the description for the specific themes and icon packs that I'm using. Installing them is simple. Once downloaded, find the .icons folder in your home directory and extract your icon packs there. It's the same for themes, just extract them into the .themes folder and after that they'll show up here in the themes app ready for you to select and customize your Linux Mint experience as well. Alright, let's jump back to Cinemenu. If you right click on it and choose configure, you'll open up a ton of customization options. You can change the entire layout, tweak its behavior, and even set your preferred web search engine like Google or DuckDuckGo. You can also customize its appearance, for example by swapping out the menu icon for one of your own. It just goes to show the possibilities for personalized your Linux Mint desktop are pretty much endless. To customize the panel itself, just right click on it and select Panel Edit Mode. This allows you to easily rearrange everything. You can move applets around or shift your calendar and clock to a different spot. You can also customize the workspace switcher. For instance, you can choose between simple buttons like I have or a more visual layout of your workspaces. It gives you some nice options to choose from. You can also customize the time and date format to get it exactly how you like. If you want a layout similar to mine, I'll put the format I'm using in the description below. Otherwise, you can easily find all the different options by Googling date and time format codes. So again, there's plenty of options for customers. So 
customization is definitely a thing um for some people it's a lot of the reason they switch um you can kind of put the pc back into personal you know put the personal back into personal computing essentially and mac os is very much uh move the dock and that's kind of about it kind of vibe to it unless you really start digging into apps and github and all the other stuff super annoying to do um and like example i will go on to say that i think finder is probably like the most abysmal file manager ever ever um like it's just so oh, it's terrible um i think i uh trying to remember the one i use uh on mac OS. i think it was a space space i can't remember space trip. um i don't remember off the top of my head what it was uh they recently kind of halted production a while ago but i i just i totally get it it's <laughs> customization is not mac os's strong point when you when windows has like three times more customization options and it's still limited it kind of says something i'm just saying uh so Linux really does put the, the personal back into computing, despite whatever distro you choose. Uh, so the look and feel is really does d depend on the user and how they want to use a, a computer. That That's something that's novel, I think, for a lot of people to, uh, not, that they really don't quite understand that concept because they're not used to it customization on Linux. There's other distros you can go with where you get into more customization options. If you go with like an Arch install, you could really customize it to your liking. But with Linux Mint, there's definitely a lot of options still out there to really customize it to make it your own like I did. So don't feel like you're left with just the out of the box Linux experience, which I know to many people feels dated. Again, you can customize it to your liking and still get a pretty modern feel out of that uh, Linux distro specifically. I'll leave, again, some of the details in the description of this video. If you have any questions, though, definitely leave a comment below. Overall, I couldn't be happier with this new custom Linux build. I love having the freedom to make my own decisions. Whether I want to switch from Mint back to Arch or swap out components down the line, it feels great to be free from Apple's walled garden and soldered parts. This ability to customize my setup whenever I want is a feeling I could just never get with a Mac. My daily workflow using workspaces, for example, is fantastic. And most importantly, all of my essential apps run beautifully without impacting my productivity. So that's been my experience with this custom build. Let me know in the comments down below, though, if you have any additional questions on this specific build, Linux in particular, or if you have questions on Linux distros, or if you have recommendations on other Linux content you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe. So hey guys, welcome to Camping with Steve. <laughs> and <laughs> well you know came with steve's fault. um so the the point he was making though i do agree with the customization the personalization um especially if you're so used to a particular walled garden approach that apple very much has now pros and cons like everything else you you can brick it you can do whatever um again lennox just like every os Every OS sucks. People want to know what that's reference to. Look up three dead trolls in a baggie. Every OS sucks. And you will find out exactly what I mean. But realistically, at the end of the day, it, it's always interesting to see these guys kind of jumping into Linux specifically, especially if they're coming from that kind of walled garden area. Um, you, you really don't hear people switching from Mac OS specifically much to Linux as much as you do of like Windows to Linux, because Windows, if you're strictly talking market share perspective on desktop and laptop kind of operating systems, <laughs> Windows is the biggest one. So you tend to hear more stories about, um, and let's be real, most Mac users um, are of a particular kind of thought process and whatnot, and how they use computers, you know, very consumery in their, their, their use case. And that's fine, but when I, uh, seeing those kind of professionals, I guess would probably be the best way, uh, the, the, the computer is the tool and whatnot, seeing them just kind of jump into Linux or across the board, doesn't matter if they're coming from Mac OS specifically, but, um, 
seeing them realize the possibilities of what computing can be is very, very fun and interesting to see and realizing that personal computing can be personal again nowadays, thanks to open source, Linux, and all the likes. And it doesn't matter which distro you choose, find the one that works for you because they all contribute something unlike certain jackasses that will tell you your distro doesn't matter. Distros matter based on your demographic. And one way here, well, I'm not, but uh, <laughs> guy in the video I was reacting to, his distro of choice was Linux Mint. Cool. Again, I'm not a Mint guy, but I'm glad it works for him. So you guys know what to do. Uh, what's your distro of choice for you and your personal computing experience? Is it Ubuntu? Is it Arch? Is it MixOS? Is it, you know, some type of free BSD knockoff? Let me know. You guys know what to do. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that on Indie Gala Patreon. All that crap is in the description, and I'll catch you on the flip. Peace. Free audio post production by Alphonic.